Welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. This is Wendy. I'm so happy you're here, and if you're new, I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button down below, along with the bell right next to it, so that you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video. Also, stay tuned till the end of the video so that you can find out how you can be entered into the drawing for a brand new Cricut cutting machine. Today we'll be doing four farmhouse DIYs using Dollar Tree items, as well as some things that you might have around the house. I know it's hard not being able to get out there and do some shopping at the Dollar Trees or at the thrift stores, but I think that might be the time when we become our most creative selves. I hope everyone's staying safe and keeping the faith. So if you're ready, let's get started. For our first project, we're gonna start with one of Dollar Tree's clear plastic salad bowls a plastic snack container, I think this one had pretzels in it, some Waverly white chalk paint and some antique wax, some Gorilla Glue or E6000, our glue gun, scissors, and a utility knife. And the first thing we're gonna do is cut the bottom portion of our container off. And this has kind of a little rounded edge, so I wanted to keep that edge intact because I wanna make it into something that looks a little bit like pottery. So once you get a slit long enough, you can fit your scissors in there and then you can just cut around the edge of that bottom. And then if there's any leftover bumpities or slivers, just cut those off and make sure it's as flat as you can get it. And then I took a piece of sandpaper and just sanded it down to get it smooth because I'm gonna have this facing down on the counter so it needs to be as flat as possible. So now I'm gonna take my white chalk paint and paint the entire surface of both the bottom and the bowl. And I wanted this to look like pottery. And this is a bowl from Pottery Barn. And this video was supposed to be part of the Look For Less challenge that Yami does over at the Latina Next Door. And I'll link that playlist in the description box below, but I didn't quite make it in time. And so I just threw in the towel and just decided to do it another day. And so here we are but the look I'm trying to get is a terracotta pot that's been painted so as you know when you paint terracotta it has some bumps and nooks and crannies and I wanted to give it that look where it's not perfectly smooth so I'm just taking my soft bristled paintbrush and going not even really in a cross hatch pattern I want no pattern at all so I'm gonna make some places a little higher a little thicker and then in some places a little thinner and then once it starts to dry you can actually drag your brush into the semi dry paint and it'll leave some texture so I really like that look and I think it gives it a realistic pottery look and then once it was almost all the way dry I went back in and did some quick thick strokes or dabs with a fully wet paintbrush so that it would give it kind of a handmade pottery look and then the inside was very shiny, so we didn't want that. So I just went in and slapped some paint on there as well so that if it's empty, you can see it and it looks worn and handmade as well. So to attach the pillar to the bowl, I took my Gorilla Glue and just did a staggered line all the way around the edge and then went back in with my hot glue gun so that the two don't mix. And the hot glue is so that it'll stick right away and the E6000 or Gorilla Glue is for the long-term super hold. So once I got that centered and onto the bowl, I went in with my Waverly Wax in Antique and took a really, really dry brush. And in fact, I didn't even load my brush ever when I was doing this. I keep my wet brushes in plastic baggies so that they don't dry out if I'm gonna use them again. And so this one was from the leftover paint of a prior DIY, so I never even put any more on there. So that's how light I wanted it to be. 
But when I went in and put that onto the bowl, it was so pretty because it really gave those textures from the paint, just really stood out and made it look old and authentic. And I think it looks exactly like pottery. And I didn't have to pay $99 for it. I paid $1. And here's how it turned out and oh my goodness I am so in love with this I was thinking maybe my painting skills are getting better but I don't even think it's that because you saw me I was just spanking it on that bowl like nothing so I think my grandkids could have done this and I just love the way it turned out I also love the table runner and the napkins that you see the buffalo check and those are from Kai Sin and my friend Cynthia sent me some discount codes for you guys but these things are heavy duty they're so pretty and durable and that table runner is $13.48 that's a great buy so it's almost like you don't even need a discount code but they have free shipping and so I don't plug anything that I don't believe in and these are gorge So for our next project, we're gonna use the top part of that pretzel container, and then this non-slip rug underlay from Dollar Tree. And then I had a luau for one of my kids a long time ago, and this is just some netting that we had left over. Some nautical rope, and the kind from Dollar Tree would work way better, but I don't have any. This is the kind from Walmart. And then some Mod Podge and some Rust-Oleum white paint or whatever kind of white spray paint you have and then our hot glue gun and scissors and so the first thing i'm going to do is put this underlay i'm going to cut that in a strip and put that at the bottom portion of my container which is actually the top so what i was going for was this look and this is from kirkland's and it was only 30 dollars. this was one that i was going to do for the look for less and 30 dollars is not a huge amount but i still wouldn't pay it for that but I think I can make it for cheaper. It won't be exactly the same, but this is pretty much going to be for a dollar as well. So I'm going to just put some hot glue at the top rim of my container and then roll my netting onto that. And I want to try and get as straight of glue line as I possibly can and then just roll it onto there. And then once I get to the end, I'll just cut it off to the right size and then I'm going to trim the bottom off so that it's a little bit easier to manage. And then I'm going to cut some strips in the bottom so that I can kind of make it go around the rounded edge of the vase. Then I'm going to use my hot glue to kind of pleat those and get them all attached at the bottom. So then you guys saw that I added my lid back on there and now I'm going to add the netting. So I just measured around the container and I'm going to decide how wide I want that to be so that I can get three layers of touchy goodness on this. And so I cut out a small strip and I'm going to 
use my Mod Podge to get that started. And then I ended up having to use some hot glue because it takes a little while for the Mod Podge to dry. And then once I get it on there, I'm gonna go back in with my Mod Podge and go over the top of the netting so it really sets in there. And I just work in little areas at a time so that it's easier to handle. And then once I get back around to the other side and I do make sure that where I stop and start on all of these pieces are gonna be at the same place so that that can all be in the back and that won't show from the front. And then I just attached it at the back seam with hot glue. So then I'm gonna finish the rest of the way up using my nautical rope and I just started with some hot glue and again work in small areas and put the glue down and then put your rope right on top of it. And I kind of overlapped over the netting so that you couldn't see the very ends of the netting. And then I'm gonna go all the way up and then once I get to the top, I'm gonna to do one final round just to give it some more stability and so that you can't really see that there's plastic under there. So then I went in with my scissors and tried to cut down on all the crazy stray fibers that were on the rope. And the Dollar Tree rope is not as crazy as this is. And I do love fibers and I love the textures, but for this project it was just not a good thing because we're gonna paint this. So I had a sweet viewer recommend using a lighter to get rid of a lot of strays when you're dealing with twine or rope like this. And this is really fun. And my fan was going, so I probably should have turned that off before or doing that but then I'm going to add another piece of rope at the bottom just to kind of clean up that bottom edge and then once that's all in place and I'm ready to go I'm going to take it outside and spray paint it all completely white So here I am painting in the dark and this is because I really wanted to participate in Yami's Look for Less challenge. So I did everything I could to make it but I didn't. So she ended up having 50 people on her playlist so that was awesome and I'm sure nobody missed me but I, here's how it turned out. and. I love how this has so many textures and like I said it's not like the original version but it just gave me the inspiration and that's what we want to do here it doesn't have to be exact but I still do love it and it turned out more farmhouse and rustic to me in this form than I think in the original because that's so much shinier and that looks porcelain but I think it turned out super cute and I hope you guys like it.
For our next project, I'm going to be using two mason jars, and I thought it was cute. I had one cur and one ball, two of these silver trays from Dollar Tree, some jute twine, some Waverly white chalk paint, and some Waverly wax in antique. And then I'm going to use my drill. Well, actually, I'm not. It's going to be Michael J. that does it, but I could if he wasn't here. So also our hot glue gun and our scissors. So I'm gonna mark the spots where I need my holes to be drilled and I went down a little less than halfway so that my jars will hang in the right spot so that if I put greenery in there, it will still be in front of the sconce. And so I knew I smelled something good in the kitchen and Michael J was making some Supa Toscana keto style and so he had to take a break from that in order to drill my holes but man it was really good to have lunch as soon as we were done with this project so all he did was took the drill and put both trays together so that he could drill into both of them at the same time and that would assure that the holes would be in the same place so he took a two by four and put it inside of a box so that the metal shavings wouldn't get all over the place so here he is he's so cute i've had a lot of viewers ask if he is available for rent so if anybody is in the bakersfield area and needs some help he'll be more than happy to oblige so now that my holes are all drilled, I'm going to take my chalk paint and just paint over the fronts of the trays. And I would have painted the backs, but I'm really running low on my Waverly chalk paint. So I have to order some and I couldn't find any. But anyway, so I'm running a little low. But otherwise, you really should paint the backs of these. But since they'll be on the wall, there's a little lip on the edges of these trays. So I did paint around those edges. And then I'm gonna paint my mason jars and I'm gonna keep those white and I'll end up sanding those down. And then for the trays, once that white paint dries, I'm gonna go back in with my wax in antique and give that some wood tone finish. So I kind of just slop it on there first and then you're supposed to wipe it off with a paper towel or a rag or something to make it the look. I just choked to make it the lighter wood but I didn't want it as dark as it still was and so I went back in with some more white so when you're using this it's really easy to get too dark or too light so all you have to do is just either add some more dark or add some more white to get it lighter and vice versa but one thing I did learn is that when you're doing two pieces that should be matching, you need to do the same steps on each of those items so that they will match because it took me a little bit of time to get them matching once I finished the first one and then to get the other one to look exactly like it. So now I'm just taking my sandpaper and rubbing along the lifted areas and it's really easy to come off if the paint's not 100% dry. But if you do come across an area that's difficult to sand off, I've had viewers recommend taking some water and it makes it a lot easier to get that paint off. So before I attach my jars, I'm gonna put my hangers on the back and I just take a chenille stem and fold it in half and then hot glue it to the back side. And then I just take a little piece of material and put that into the glue also just to give it some more stability. So then I'm gonna take some jute twine and after I put on my jar lid without the round part in the middle so that it's still open, I'm gonna leave two pieces long so that I can feed those through the two holes. And then I'm gonna use some hot glue to attach those to the trays and then I'll tie it in the back in a knot to keep those in place. And I'll have my sweet little grandchildren put their fingers there so I can tie the knot.
And here's how these turned out. And I am so hooked on the light wood with the white. And then you throw in the lamb's ear and I'm completely hooked. So for a total cost of $4 plus the lamb's ear, so that would be $6 total, you get two bunches of lamb's ear for $2 at Walmart. So technically, I guess you could say this is $6, but I think for $6, these are awesome sconces and they do not look like Dollar Tree, I don't think. And so the mason jars, you also can get at Dollar Tree. So I counted that as a dollar each as well. But these I just had in my stash from somebody's wedding. So anyway, I think they look beauty -mas and I hope you guys like them. So a lot of you guys have been asking about my daughter Christine who is due with her third baby on May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. And so she is doing very well. She's getting really excited. It's going to be a little bit different as far as giving birth and not having anybody there except for husband. But she is still being the light and we're trying to do some modeling <laughs> for threadtank.com who sent some really cool t-shirts and so she's modeling them and <laughs> we had so much fun doing this and we couldn't keep a straight face but their t-shirts are so good and i'm gonna have a coupon code for you guys to get 10 percent off and this is a company where the motto is stories you can wear. So they have some really good messages on some of them. There's this one, walking with the Lord is my cardio. And then they also have this one that she was showing in the first pictures, but it has pray in seven languages. And unfortunately with that big belly that she has there carrying my grandson, you could only see about two of them. And then worry ends when faith begins. I love that one. And I love that message, especially for now. And then these, this was a sidewalk drive by photography shoot that somebody did here in town. And I thought this was really cute. And so just so that you guys know, she's doing well and everybody is very excited for Connor to get here on May 5th. Okay, so for our final project, we're gonna be using four of these eight by eight picture frames that have little messages inside of them. And then the windmill wind chime that you see in the garden area. And then the rest of that rug underlay. And then a little piece of some burlap ribbon. And then I'm gonna be using my Silhouette Cameo 3. So I'm using some black vinyl from Frisco Craft and I'll have them linked as well. And then some Waverly chalk paint in ink, and then also in elephant, and then our wax that's in antique. And then a sanding block, I think I used just regular sandpaper, but our glue gun and scissors. And so the first thing we're gonna do is deconstruct our little windmill to get the windmill itself off of the wind chime. So there's a little tabby on the top, and if you just keep moving it back and forth, it'll eventually come off. And then you have to kind of squeeze together the little pole or the stick that goes through the round part of the bottom triangle. So once you get that squeezed together, it pops right out. And then we're going to use just the glasses and not the cardboard from these frames. And there's little styrofoam pieces or foam pieces that kind of are used as a lifter between the glass and the message. So we're gonna take those out. And you always have to be really careful with these frames because they're not really wood and they're not even press board. They're almost like a styrofoam or some kind of foam. So you have to move those little tabbies very easily and carefully so that they don't break off. 
So now I'm just gonna take my white chalk paint and paint the entire frames. And because they're dark underneath, I don't have to have a perfectly solid coverage. So it kind of makes it automatically distressed if you see some of those streaks of the dark underneath it showing through. So now I'm gonna take my windmill and my ink chalk paint and paint all of the blades and the circle part of the rim. And I don't want this to be perfectly solid either, so I'm gonna go back in with my sandpaper and sand the edges and let some of that blue show through, but mostly that galvanized look that's underneath. So I'm also gonna paint the back side in case you can see any of the back showing through. I don't think it will show, but just to kind of finish it up, I don't know why. I like to paint the backs of things. So now I'm gonna take some elephant chalk paint and I'm going to take a paintbrush and just dab all over my underlay and this is kind of a rubbery material and so it's really easy to work with as you saw before but I want to make it look a little bit galvanized a little bit rustic so that it kind of resembles a type of chicken wire or something so this is my version of square chicken wire and then I'll also dab in some of the wax in Antique. So now I'm gonna take my sandpaper and now that my frames are dry, I'm gonna sand the edges and get that all nicely distressed. It looks on video like these frames are black, but they're not. They're more of a really, really dark brown. So I love that I'm able to sand these so easily and that shows through and looks really rustic and pretty. So now I'm gonna take that round center piece and fold the little tabby under the bottom of it. And then I'll hot glue that to the top of the windmill to finish it off. And then I'm gonna cut out my HME from my Silhouette Cameo and I'll have the font listed in the description box below. And then I just cut those letters out and then I'm gonna place those onto the glass once we get them put together. Whenever I have leftover vinyl, I always cut them in squares so that they're usable again, and then I put them in a bin under my workstation. So now I'm gonna pull off the top layer of vinyl, and these were super easy to weed because there was really no weeding to them. And then I'm gonna put my transfer paper on top of those, and I'm actually gonna use one piece of transfer tape for all three of the letters. And I get my transfer tape from the Dollar Tree, and it's actually shelf paper, and it's in the dish aisle with all the dishes and glassware and so it's with the shelf paper. So a lot of people have asked me about that so that you can find it, now you'll know where to look once you can go shopping again. So now I'm gonna set these letters aside and then we're gonna put our frames together. So the first thing I did with that is put my glass into the frame and then I'm gonna use some window cleaner to clean those off and make sure there's no lint or anything. And then I'm gonna cut out a piece of my chicken wire and then I'm gonna glue that around the edges of the frame. And it's always so much easier to work with materials that have a grid of some sort, like buffalo check, because you can always cut in a straight line and you don't get all crookedy. So then I just pulled the tabbies over so that by taking them out, I risk cracking my frame and I didn't wanna do that. So I just pushed them over to the side of the frames and then I hot glued my chicken wire into the inside area of the frame. And then I used a popsicle stick to push down onto that glue to make sure it got nice and adhered to the, well, it's rubber, but you know, it's our chicken wire. And so after I got that all secured, I'll attach my vinyl letters to each of the frames on top of the glass.
So now I'm going to take my windmill and attach it to my frame and there's two spots where it actually hits and I put some hot glue right under those blades and attach it and it's really secure because the little windmill is pretty light anyway and you do want to make sure that you get all of your little glue strings off of your glass and if you have trouble grabbing some you can always use tweezers to get them out of there so then I'm going to turn it over and put my chicken wire into that one and I ran out so I didn't have any more full sheets but I knew that was going to happen so I had planned ahead and there's a spot right in the middle of the windmill where it goes completely across and so I just pieced it right in the middle there and you can't even tell that it's pieced together. So now I'm going to take some of my burlap ribbon and cut it down to the size that I need and then I'm going to cut it long ways so that it's more narrow and fits between the two sides of the frame and that's what's going to hold these frames together. So when I glue it down I want to make sure that first of all the little sawtooth hanger is at the top so that you'll always have the option of hanging this as well as setting this on a countertop but I also want my letters to kind of accord style fold if that makes sense this way they can move around a little bit and the burlap ribbon is working as a hinge so to speak and if you've ever bought frames from Dollar Tree in multiples you probably know they're never quite the same size so you just want to make sure that the bottom line is perfectly even because that's going to be sitting on a countertop whereas the top doesn't have to be perfectly aligned And here's how this one turned out and you see what I meant by the accordion style. So I think it's so cutie patootie and I did get a couple of air bubbles underneath my vinyl letters but I don't know what happened. I think I wasn't paying attention or something. But I love how rustic and farmhouse looking this is. I will have these letters available in my Etsy shop and that's White Sparrow Living. So if you want to make this or you need the letters for a Another project just go to my Etsy shop and you will find things there that might help you in your crafting but I hope you guys like this okay so now for the details for the Cricut cutting machine giveaway the drawing is going to be held on June 1st so in order to qualify you need to be subscribed and then just comment you don't have to put a special character or say you want to be in it. It doesn't even matter if you know you're in it or not. If you comment and you're subscribed, you can be a winner. I wish I could give everybody one of these, but I just love you all so much. And I appreciate that you helped make me, well, not help, you, you made it happen, that we hit 50,000 subscribers. So that's just such a blessing and so amazing to me. And I wish I could hug every one of you guys. And I really do enjoy reading each and every one of your comments. And so as soon as they come in, I read them. I try to get back to you as soon as I can, but that's sometimes hard when I'm crafting and trying to get videos out. So just be patient with me and just know that your words mean so much to me.
thank you guys so much for watching and if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up comment and let me know what you think to be entered into the drawing i hope everyone has a blessed day and remember to always be the light bye